In this portion of the lecture, we're going to consider how we might identify intellectual capital liability. We've just finished reviewing a very rich set of intellectual capital assets, or one of many capabilities that would, uh, the, university, the university would support, and that would be the, uh, providing a, a high-quality undergraduate education experience. So now let's consider how those assets might be diminished through liabilities. Let's begin with a discussion of what we mean by a liability. At its simplest, a liability is something that an individual is responsible for. In other words, something they have incurred. It might be a legal debt, a deficit, or an obligation. In the case of uh, financial and physical liabilities for physical assets, we're talking about the use of those assets in, uh, to acquire something else. So you use financial resources or you, you, you use the physical resources in order to produce something else. In the case of intellectual capital assets, using those assets, as we mentioned earlier, does not diminish them in any way. Generally, we occur a liability in relation to intellectual capital assets by either misuse or mismanagement of those assets. So a liability in this case is something that diminishes the value of an intellectual capital asset or maybe is a missing asset. So simply by using an intellectual capital asset, we cannot diminish it. But by misusing it or mismanaging it, we may diminish the value. So what might be some intellectual capital liabilities that we would incur for each of the capabilities that we just walked through in the uh, previous session of the lecture? So let's consider what happens when assets are missing or misused for the capability that involves recruiting top quality faculty. Well, what happens when intellectual capital is missing or is misused in relation to tacit knowledge? Let's say we have a, a top-notch faculty member whose methods of teaching are a little bit different. So there's a little bit different approach to culture. Perhaps the attitude is a little bit different. But the, uh, the school or the college decides that they're not comfortable with that faculty member's uh, behavior, so they do not retain that faculty member. So the faculty member's tacit knowledge is lost to the uh, university. Of the eight categories of intellectual capital assets, it would seem to me, this is just my personal opinion, that the highest value, highest valued asset would be tacit knowledge when we're looking at faculty. Okay? So if we were to misuse some of the other aspects or mismanage some of the other aspects of the, the faculty member's intellectual capital, we might lose access to the faculty member's tacit knowledge. Or the faculty member might get become discouraged and not be as productive, or might be less willing to share their tacit knowledge, in which case there would be a diminished um, value associated with that tacit knowledge. That would be a liability. What happens when assets are missing or mismanaged in the curriculum development some capability? Well, here, again, we could perhaps come up with a story or a scenario where the, the nature of the culture is such that there is no curriculum development model that individual faculty members are allowed to develop their curriculum entirely in isolation without consultation with any other members of the school or across the university, in which case we might have a very um, poorly structured or poorly aligned curriculum. Perhaps there's a lot of redundancy, perhaps there's a lot of overlap, perhaps there are gaps, et cetera. 
So while in this case the tabs acknowledge that each individual faculty member might be used uh, fully, the, the impact um, to uh, the fact that the fact that the procedural knowledge is poorly managed leads to a diminished value of the overall tacit knowledge and perhaps also of the explicit knowledge because the correct the actual course design and the actual course development is sub substandard. So again we have a diminished value, a diminished effect due to the mismanagement of one of those intellectual capital assets. What happens when assets are missing or misused, mismanaged, or in the recruit student category? What would be the, the way I would start to think about this is I would consider which is the most important intellectual capital asset when we're looking at recruiting students. And I would say that probably some, um, the nature of culture, the nature of attitude, uh, it's probably and the, the uh, value of networks. So networks, culture, and attitude might be the most important intellectual capital assets for this capability, simply because students are looking at the university in terms of its culture and attitude, and we're looking at students to find cultures and attitudes that align with and support that of the university. Networks are very important for recruiting because it's through networks that we convey our brand, our reputation, etc. So I would say that those are most important. Now what happens if we mismanage some of those? Let's uh, consider that we do not convey our culture um, very, very well, or we have a very poor culture. Um, it's perhaps um, focus primarily on graduate level education. So we might have an issue with recruiting undergraduate students if the university has a reputation for not focusing its, its, its top faculty on teaching undergraduate courses. Let's say that we have uh, grad teaching assistants teaching courses at the undergraduate level and students never have interaction with uh, the, the best faculty on campus. That might be a diminished value of um, that comes through in our attitude and our culture and is definitely um, an asset that is reflected widely in our network. Overall, I think our brand would probably be quite diminished as well because of the lack of access to the top faculty. Okay, so I'm hoping that those few short scenarios made some sense. If nothing else, I hope it conveys the challenge that's involved in actually in, in identifying a liability and relating it to the very challenging aspect and characteristics of intellectual capital. Okay. So I'd like you to share your thoughts on which capital, which intellectual capital assets would likely have the greatest value in each, and just pick one of those three sub capabilities that we just discussed and share your thoughts on what, uh, first, what it, which is the most highly valued intellectual capital asset, and what do you think would be some examples of mismanagement of or misuse of those assets. In other words, which of those assets are most likely to produce liabilities that might affect the value of the other assets? And just share your thoughts. Okay. 